Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to teach you how we can paint an ultramarine in the grimdark style without using oils, enamels or any sort of crazy products. We're specifically only going to be using acrylic paints to achieve that grimdark result. Also the, the hints, tips and techniques that we do teach in this video don't just apply to the ultramarines. You can take all these techniques and use them in whatever colour scheme that you wish to apply it to. Also, don't worry if you don't have the specific colours from the specific brands that I use in this video. I'll also be putting the alternatives that you can use from Games Workshop. If you're new to this channel, please remember to hit that like button and the subscribe button to keep up to date with all the latest videos that I release. If you do want to specifically pick up some of the paints that I've got in this video, you can use my affiliate links in the description below. Now, like I said, when it comes to the Grimdark style, a lot of people think, you know, you need the oil washers, the enamels, and all the crazy products that are uh, out there on the market, and, and that's specifically not the case. The, the Grimdark style, uh, you know, it, it's a unique look in itself, and we can achieve this just by changing the techniques of how we apply the paint, how we paint it, and desaturating some of those colours. So with that said, let's get straight into the video. So here we've got our ultramarine primed in black. Uh, there's no specific primer that you do need for this. It can just literally be any black primer that you desire. Now using Macrag Blue, which is like the base coat for the ultramarines, uh, the, the, obviously you can see I'm using an Artis Opus D brush, um, which is like a, a dry brush. You don't specifically have to use one of these. Uh, any brush will sort of do, as long as you can sort of do this like stabbing motion. A little bit later on in the video, we will be switching it up to the sponge technique, which you can use for this as well. And the size doesn't really matter. All we're doing is just mixing that Macrag Blue 50-50 water to paint and we're just literally going around all our miniature stabbing it and just getting those base coats on now the reason we're stabbing it on is as you can see it leaves like a little bit of pitting and like mottling on, on like the miniature itself and throughout this paint scheme that's what we're trying to achieve throughout it because it's going to leave little sections some a little bit lighter some a little bit darker and again this is entirely up to you how much of this like chipping slash you know like pitting that you want going on on your miniature but for this first coat we're just literally working his way around it it doesn't have to be fully opaque because you can go on there and do a second layer and the, the beauty of doing it this way as well it builds up like texture on the armor and it, again it just leads more into that grim dark style so get your macrag blue work your way all around the miniature until you've got the the boy all painted up in blue don't worry if you get some overspill on some sections it's a little bit like airbrushing because obviously you're going to get a bit of overspray and like hit bits that you don't really want to uh, get like blue but don't worry about that we can paint over these sections a little bit later on now i'm switching to the sponge technique so if you don't know what this is it's just a little bit of packaging sponge or if you go to like your local supermarket and buy a sponge that you use in bath or shower and you can just break them up into little bits like this uh, and away you go uh, here i've got like these crocodile clip things what you use if you're painting in like miniatures where you've got like sub assemblies and stuff i just literally clip mine into there and it acts as like a nice easy comfortable grip uh, for my hand if you've got tweezers you can do it with tweezers or if you get a big enough piece of sponge you can literally do it by hand the reason we are going to be using this sponge is because it creates like um again it's just going to play more into that texture and it's, it's just all gonna you know <laughs> i'm going to say this a lot go into that grimdark aesthetic where it's like the armor's chipped and it's all been banged up uh, and mottled. Now the colour for this that we're going to use, because I want to introduce a little bit of uh, lightness to it, like a little bit lighter than the Macrag Blue, um, I have got AK Ultra Marines Blue. And again, I've watered this down 50-50 with water and I'm just working my way around all the miniature again just dabbing it here and there that when you when you do what your paints down as well when you first put them on it might look a little bit too light you might think oh my god that's quite a big tonal jump don't worry when when paint goes on a little bit wet it always dries a slightly little bit darker uh, than what it does and now the specific way with each section that we're going to go up from now is what these are going to be like this this section here is just going to be working its way around what we've already done but leaving that macrag blue in some of the darker areas like under his legs and under his feet and again we're just trying to you know get that texture and that mottling look so don't pay too much attention at this stage 
with like your highlights and like the shines and stuff like that. Next up, we're going to introduce the colour Vallejo Light Sea Blue. Now, for the first pass that we're going to put onto our miniature, we're going to mix that with the Ultramarines Blue 50 50 and then do one final highlight pass, uh, just paying specific attention to areas where the light would hit, like the top of the shoulder blades, the head, and the jetpack, and like some knee, knee pads and stuff. That we're just going to do that specifically in the Light Sea Blue. But again, as you can see now, it looks a little bit matted and a little bit over the top at this stage. Uh, but you can sort of see that texture and all that different mottling that we've got going off in the armour. It looks a little bit ugly at this stage, but stick with it. And uh, you'll see by the end of it how we dull that down and make sure that it all blends together. But again, we're just getting tighter with each stage that we go up. We're just paying, paying specific attention to areas where the light would hit. Uh, like the, the the light's coming down from a 45 degree angle uh, and it's hitting the miniature and again it's just going to add a little bit more dramaticism is that that's not even a word is it a little bit more drama and a little bit more something exciting to look at than just being one single plain color all over the miniature now again at this stage if you've got any decals or transfers that you do want to add you can put them on your miniature now um, I use Microsol and Microset and just get a cotton bud uh, and just lightly roll over it. If you don't have that product, it's not necessary, just use water. It'll take a little bit longer and it might just be a little bit harder to put on there. Um, but just going around and getting something like a, a cotton stick or a cotton bud and just rolling it on and rolling it till you get your miniature nice and flat. Now once they've dried and we have put them on... We're going to get our original colours that we've just used, like as McCrag blue and as ultramarine blue. And we're just going to dab a little bit onto there as though like it's chipped away on that decal or that sticker. And again, it's going to add to some of that weathering. Now we're going to add some chipping to the armour that we've already done. So using Rhinox Hide or any sort of like dark brown. Again, we're going to get our sponge out. We should just, I can't even know if I can call this video painting. We might as well just call it sponging. Um, but you're just going to work your way around the armor panels and start to add chips to areas that you want to make look chipped. You can go as heavy or as light with this as you like. It's entirely up to you. But again, if you do want it to have that little bit more of a realistic tone or a realistic look, we'll literally, uh, what I tend to do is areas that would naturally be dinged up, like the lower half of the miniature, like his legs and stuff and his knee pads, uh, they're going to have like a little bit more heavy chipping. And then places like his elbows, as you start to move up the head, you might just want to start to tone those chips down a little bit. And we're going to introduce as well, because we don't just want to do it with a sponge, we're also going to get our brush and join some of those little chips, make some a little bit bigger, put some scratches in it. And again, this is it's a nice stage that I enjoy doing. It's uh, quite therapeutic, but just working your way around um, and like areas that wouldn't actually be cheap, you can get your brush and join those together and you'll get like nice little thinner strokes. Now you can go around and base coat all the other parts of your mini uh, and there'll be a little annotation appears on screen with the names of the colours because I sort of wanted to pay more attention to the armour which is going to be the centrepiece of this uh, miniature um, but all the colours that will appear on screen now uh, are my favourite colours for like the metallics and everything like that uh, and then we're going to move into our like our wash phase or adding a little bit more of our what we'd typically at this point would be adding like streak and grime and stuff if it were if we we're going to go down the enamel route but like i said we're only going to be using acrylics so now we're going to jump into how we can weather it with just using acrylics and washers now rather than using streak and grime we're going to be using the contrast paint rattling grime or rattling grime by games workshop this is one of my favorite is contrast paints um, so areas like the gold trim and all your metallic areas just literally whack it all over them don't be watering it down or anything just literally apply it as you would normally now when it comes to the armor what I've done here, I've, I've sort of watered it down 50-50 with water and I'm sort of using it as a little bit like a panel liner and I'm literally just going in and painting all the areas that need to be dark and doing those darker and, and what you can do, you can even water it down even more and just literally wash it over areas depending on how heavy and stuff you want it to be but literally work your way around all your miniature with like the panel lines if you want to darken some areas up just give it like a little glaze of this over the top of it 
um, and then we'll move on to the next stage which is like our rust and weathering now these are the colors that I'm going to be using for my rust the, you don't have to specifically use these if you've not got them you can literally to get the rust effect you can just get something like a, an, a couple of different oranges a couple of different yellows a couple of different browns like Mornfang brown uh, water these down into like a wash consistency and you are good to go but literally all I'm doing now Working my way around all the miniature, adding the rust and letting it run into the crevices, adding some streaks. Now you do have to be a little bit quick with this because usually when we're using you know, like oils and enamels, we've got that options to wipe it away. Where with this, once it's on, it's on. So I always say water it down and start to build up those areas slowly because you can always go in and add more rather than you know <laughs> do too much and then not be able to take it off. And then finally, that's pretty much our miniature complete. The last finishing touches I did were to paint the eyes. I tend to paint mine white and then use whatever color contrast paint for the eyes uh, in there. Uh, I gave the, all the metallics a final dry brush of lead belcher. Uh, and then paint the base in whatever scheme you want to do it in. And one last little thing I've added to add to that grim darkness is I've used a little bit of pigment powder. And I've just brushed that up on dusted some onto his legs. And that is our Ultramarine Complete. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, the, you know, the, all the techniques and everything like that applies to any other colour, like if you're doing like white scars or blood angels, imperial fists, it's just all you're going to be changing is like from the blue to the yellow to the red to the green, however you want to do your miniature, just using the same principles that we've used in this video. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this one on how to achieve the grimdark style in just using acrylics. And if you have enjoyed it, please, please, please remember to hit that like button. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you in my next video.